September 21st, 1987. It's been one year since I first went inside that house. I have to finish what I started. What I am about to do has not been approved by the Vatican. Welcome to... Faith. So here goes. Oh shit. It's Latin. And we are here. I have a cross by my side. A well of doom. You're invited. Come celebrate Nate and Jason's sixth birthday, Saturday, May 3rd. Directions turn right at 1338 Snake Meadowfield Road and go straight past the well. So wants me to go right. Public Lecture by Carl James Osborne Connecticut's historical connections to witchcraft, Satanism and the beast system, Wednesday 8pm Blimey, I'm back. I guess I'll just go up then. Here we are. It's locked. It's locked. Is there a back door for this? I guess not. I'm gonna have to find a key. Mr. Martin, it has taken longer than expected registering the markers on your property as a historical cemetery. Our office has had difficulty identifying who was buried there. The inscriptions on the gravestones are written in a language that we cannot identify. I've sent the gravestone rubbings to some of my peers at the University of Connecticut. I will reach out to you when I get a response from them. All the best. Daryl Anderson. State of Connecticut Historical Society. That scared me. Thank God I have God on my side. Bob, the kids and I miss you more every day. The twins and Amy have started their next school year here at home. Amy keeps asking when she's going to be allowed to go to real school. I think she's getting ca cabin fever. The twins are having no problems occupying their time. 
Yesterday, they came in with their hands covered in blood. I guess they found a dead deer and thought it would be a good idea to touch it. I think we might have a coyote problem, because when I went out with them to look at the dead deer, it was a pretty gruesome sight. All this just a day after the twins' birthday party. Can't wait till you come home. Blimey, I'm fucking back again. It's getting real aggressive. How does it change every time? My whole world has turned upside down. I caught some people walking through the woods around the house last week. Not kids, just regular adults. They told me they got lost while hiking. I pointed them back towards the road. The whole thing just didn't feel right. I think I should go dig up Bob's rifle out of storage. Intruders. The Martin's house lies about a hundred yards off of Snake Meadow Hill Road. There is almost no driveway. Trees jut out in the middle of a gravel path that is mostly covered in grass. It was difficult to find the house, especially since it was already dark when we arrived. Father Al Alred seemed to know where he was going. He simply drove straight ahead until we arrived at the house. In the headlights, I saw an old shed off to the right of the path. Father Alred explained that he would rather perform the exorcism away from the house. But the Martins had insisted that Amy remain inside. He complained that having the family present makes it difficult to proceed with elements of the right that may seem harsh to the lay person. Whoa! You can't do that to me! Today I noticed Amy's favorite tree looks like it's dying. All the needles are falling off it and the bark is peeling. I guess I'm more upset about it than Amy is. She is totally absorbed in her volunteer work at the clinic. I guess it's good that she found something she's passionate about. But I've got an ugly looks from some of the women at book club. Kathy and her religious friends won't even talk to me anymore. Father Garcia. You are hereby instructed to release Michael Davis from your care and return him to his home immediately. Mr. and Mrs. Davis have already been contracted or contacted by our office. A representative of the church is currently en route to their home to discuss compensation in return for their discretion. You will meet our representative there and accompany him back to Rome. 
Cardinal Gifford. Blimey, evil detected. Stop right there. Mr. and Mrs. Martin greeted us at the front porch. Mr. Martin led us downstairs to the basement, explaining that Amy was down there in restraints. I felt for him. There was guilt and shame in his voice. Amy was in the very back of the attic in a chair, perfectly calm, staring at us. It is hard to describe the look on her face. It was not the kind of look a child gives you. Looks evil. This plant is cursed. Why is it colored? There is evil behind me. I guess I'm going upstairs. It's awfully quiet, you know. Bob must be stationed somewhere in Middle East because he sent over this weird-looking doll for Amy's birthday. I'll ask Anish about it next time we have book club. She looks like she could be from over there. Amy didn't seem excited to see the doll. I think she would rather have a phone instead. Or maybe seeing a baby doll makes her feel self-conscious about working at the clinic. I guess I was the only one who thought to check in the attic. When I got up there, it was freezing cold. I found Amy standing in the back, looking straight at me like when I first met her downstairs. We spoke briefly, although it was frustrating to talk to her, or it. I experienced a bit of deception from the demon. During our conversation, she uttered my mother's first name, and in other instances spoke perfect Latin. I called for help from the others, but nobody came, so I raised my crucifix and began to write again. I don't feel safe in my own home anymore. I hear voices outside around the house at night. I don't let the twins go out in the woods to play because I'm afraid of what's out there. The house itself feels stressed, distorted, slanted somehow. It's like I'm walking through a carnival funhouse. Amy's condition has only gotten worse. I can't stand to be around her and I don't know why. She just doesn't seem like herself anymore. I want to take her to the doctor but I can't leave the boys here. I find that the phone stops working throughout the day, and now I can't seem to find my car keys. 
Thank God Bob comes home tomorrow. I saw something. Something flashed. No axes. I guess I'll move to the basement. I see blood. Dear Amy, thanks for writing. It really brightened my day hearing from you. In your letter you asked what's the weirdest thing I've seen as a missionary. The area we are walking in has a lot of folks who practice Quimbamba. It's what you might call a pagan religion. It's kind of a mix of Catholic, Catholic and African religions. One of the saints they worship is San La Muerte or Saint Death. Yesterday we talked to a boy about 15. When we asked him if he had ever prayed, he said no, but I have prayed to San La Muerte. He told us about a time when he stayed over at his cousin's house and, according to him, they prayed to some figures of San La Muerte and the figures made things in the house move around. He got real quiet and scared looking after that. We told him he could pray to God and that God wouldn't make him feel scared like that. We invited him to church, but he hasn't come yet. I need to wrap this letter up and get back to work. See you in four months, Leighton. Bloody hell! One of you are evil. Right? No, I suppose not. Amy's parents could not endure witnessing the proceedings of the riot for long. Mrs. Martin was hysterical, and the thing that was inside Amy was feeding off of the fear. Father Arid asked me to take the Martins upstairs. I was physically worn out, but managed to get them back up the stairs into the kitchen. Amy was screaming, Mother, the whole time. Finally, I got them to sit down with me at the kitchen table. After a few minutes, we couldn't hear much of anything down in the basement, so I went down to check on things. I found Father Alred lying on his back, unconscious, with his arms spread out wide. Amy was not in the chair. Whoa! I may hear. She is here. She's here. Ow. Maybe I should have used my cross instead of letting her sneak up on me like that. Let's do this. Got him.
I heard a door open upstairs. Is that so? So I have nothing to do with that pentagram? The attic has been unlocked. Karen, the church might contact you in a few days to tell you their version of what happened to me. I want you to hear it from me first. A year ago, I was involved in the exorcism of Amy Martin. What they said in the papers about what happened isn't true. She, my superior, father, with... When I confronted her, she managed to cut the power to the house, and her own parents, with their own. I have to go back to that house. The nightmares I'm having are real. She's still there, waiting for me. I can still help her. If I don't come back, know that I love you and I'm sorry, John. My God, what happened to you? Do you think my face is breaking? I have to finish what I started. She died, priest. Boss fight. Oh, I have to dodge. Fuck. Mortis. Phase three. Holy cow, watch out. Whoa. Oh. She escaped. This is the ceremony for opening the... Let no brother or sister utter it. Prepare the... Use the right index finger to draw the signs of the... On the floor. Bring an impure vessel to the signs of the... Let a brother or sister drink at each sign of the... Carve the face of the... The blood that fills the opening is the new... Let seven... 
be taken from their mothers and lowered into the upon the offering of the seventh the will emerge from the this is the second death I have no idea what they're talking about kill her a gun with one bullet a gun with one bullet it's reversed a gun with one bullet Oh fuck. Excuse me. A gun with one bullet. A gun with one bullet. Whoa! God damn, I'm going to hell! Evil! Whoa, get off me! <laughs> December 30, 1986. Dear Dr. McLashen, it has been 30 days since the beginning of my treatment here at Yelf Psychiatric Institute. Dr. Spinal, who has been so patient with me, has helped me understand my afflictions and has helped me find a way to move forward and accept the truth. With Dr. Spinal's help, I have come to accept what really happened in September at the Martin family residence. I accept that what happened was not the result of any supernatural phenomenon, but rather the desperate actions of a young girl driven to violence by her dogmatic parents and old church rituals that are thought to be drive out evil. I am happy to report that since accepting the truth, my nightmares have ceased and I now enjoy peace of mind that I have not felt since the incident. Given my progress since first coming here, I respectfully request my release from Yale Psychiatric Institute. Contingent upon follow-up appointments with Dr. Spinal in the future, sincerely, John Ward. A gun with one bullet. I guess I'm done here. I will leave the premises. Serves you right. I will send a flower. It is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. I shall not be afraid of the terror in the night, nor the evil that walketh in darkness. Because I have made the Lord my refuge. Because I have set my love upon him. 
therefore will he deliver me. I shall call upon him and he will answer me. He will be with me in trouble, he will deliver me and honor me. I can't explain what happened at that house. I can only have faith that I did the right thing. Game over. Ending 5 of 5. When faith endures. Well, that was definitely an experience. I love the graphic style a lot. It's unique. It's very unique. Never expected an exorcism game like this. It is done right. Either way. If you want to find the other endings, give it a try yourself, link will be in the description. And this is it for the video, thank you all so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it, and have a good day, I'll see you around, bye bye!